Hi. <laughs> I remember so well how I got my first job when I got out of college. It started on the typical Sunday afternoon phone call that I had with my parents. And it went something like this. Suzanne, you're graduating with a degree in mechanical engineering and a degree in theater and film. And there's all these engineering companies coming on campus to interview people. You're a female engineer. You really should go get a job with one of those companies. And every Sunday I said to my dad, I can't do it. There's no way me with this theater interest and this engineering background that I could go work in a cubicle somewhere. I wasn't going to do it. And my mom chimed in and she said, you can always do that artsy stuff as a hobby. <laughs> I didn't listen to my parents. I decided that after I graduated, I was going to go to London. And I was going to find a job at the best theater in the world, the National Theater of Great Britain. I didn't have a job. There was no job posting. There was no job listing. This was pre-internet. How was I going to get a job that I knew nothing about, and I knew no one? And somehow, I was bound to determine that this is what I was going to do. So I was in my apartment in London, and I figured I'm going to bring some tools with me that are going to help me figure out how I'm going to get this job. I didn't know what I was doing. I was terrified. I mean, to be quite honest, I was terrified. But I took my backpack out, and into my backpack, I put a play a analysis that I'd written on an Arthur Miller play. And then I took these diagrams that I had drawn in a mechanical engineering class and I put them in my backpack and I slung my backpack over my shoulder and I said, off I go. And so I went to the National Theater where I knew no one and there was no job opening. And I walked into the reception area of the backstage part of the theater. And I walk up to the receptionist and I said, hi, my name is Suzanne Goldstein. I just moved here from the United States and I'd like to work here. She was a British woman. <laughs> she did not get me at all. And she said, in a very lovely English lilt that I will not try to mimic, do you have an appointment? And I said, no, I don't, but I really want to work here. Do you think there's someone that would be willing to talk to me so I can get a job here at the National Theater? She said, you know, we're rather busy right now. Would you mind coming back another time? And I said, if it's okay with you, I'm going to wait. And so I did. For eight days. For eight days in a row, I went back to the National Theatre of Great Britain and I befriended the receptionist behind the desk. We talked when they had breaks. I brought them tea. I learned everything I could about the theatre. I watched, ev read every playbill. I read everything that was going on. And on the eighth day, what I call my Hanukkah miracle, <laughs> One of the receptionists said, there's a gentleman who's interested in talking to you. And I went in and it turns out that he was the production manager at one of the stages at the National Theatre of Great Britain. And he needed someone who knew theatre and knew mechanical drafting. <laughs> that was me. And that's how I landed my first job. Now, I do not recommend that any of you go out and sit in the lobby for eight days these days. <laughs> you will end up in jail. And it's a very different scenario. So I don't want you to do that. But what I do want to illustrate in that story is what I call the day I discovered my paintbrush. The name of my book is Carry a Paintbrush, How to Be the Artistic Director of Your Own Career. And what I learned in that moment is that I carried with me a bucket of paint and a paintbrush. And when I saw an opportunity that I wanted to go after, I took out that paint, and I took out that paintbrush, and I painted a doorway. And then I opened that doorway, and I stepped through it. And I call that moment creating an opportunity for something lucky to happen.